And we're on. Hopefully you can't hear the washing machine going too much. Um, right, hello. Um, it's Lent and I have a massive commute which means I can't do my standard thing of um, doing ridiculous blog posts and that kind of thing. So instead I am going to do video updates because I can do video updates while showing you what I'm doing, which is nothing very interesting. And I think that's kind of the point of this Lent, because this Lent I have given up casual clothing. Um, and that's all very well and good when I'm at work, because, you know, not having casual clothing on at work is not a terrible thing, um, not a terribly difficult thing, especially now that I work in London Bridge, so it's like it's the kind of place where people don't have casual clothing on. They have, they have suits and things like that. Um, and that's what I have on. <clears throat> but it's when I'm not at work that it gets interesting because then I have to do all my casual things in a suit. So yesterday, for instance, I went to see um, the, I went to the cinema with my friends. And obviously they were in jeans and shirts and jumpers and so on and so forth. And I was in my three-piece suit because that's what I have to be wearing all the time. Um, now, of course, I actually went to see Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, so it's entirely possible that people thought I was doing some sort of ridiculous cosplay. Um, but let's hope they weren't because that would make me look very silly. And I wouldn't want to look very silly. So today I'm showing you me ironing. Um, now at the moment I'm doing the ironing very quickly because you may or may not have noticed that what I'm ironing is handkerchiefs and handkerchiefs do not take a lot of skill to iron, they are big and flat. Um, the difficult bit is fitting them all onto the ironing board at the same time or the whole handkerchief onto the ironing board at the same time. Um, now I've also done exercise today which I was kind enough to film for you as well. Now I say I've done exercise, my exercise consists of skipping until my legs get tired, um, which is at 128 skips, I say that, it's, I just like doing things in powers of two. Um, soon as I feel like I'm very, very comfortable doing 128 skips, then I will, of course, progress to 256. Now I only do this over the weekend because during the week I can just walk into work from where I park as well as walk up the steps to work because I'm on the 15th floor. So that gives me a decent little workout. Um, I do kind of hope that by the end of this lens, if I have been taking care of myself and that kind of thing, I'm going to be able to wear um, my awesome t-shirt that's too small for me um, because it's a medium and I am a large. But if I manage to get all the fat down and that kind of thing, then it might just fit me nicely and I might look amazing in it. It seems unlikely, but you never know. And it's something worth shooting for, I would have thought. Um, now, I don't want to make this a sort of whole body image thing in case random people do find me on the internet and think that I need saving from myself. Um, you know, according to my BMI, I am currently overweight. I know I don't necessarily look it. Um, and even when I get down to what I consider my ridiculously low weight of 73 kilos and whatever that is in stones and pounds and so on and so forth, um, that is apparently the cusp of me being overweight because I'm quite short. Um, now I'd like to call it big bonedness, um, but I have no idea, um, but yeah. Either way, I think it won't hurt me to get down to 73 kilos. Uh, last time I weighed myself, I was just below 80 kilos. Um, but I think I like the idea that, because obviously at the moment, nobody gets to see my paunch. 
nobody gets to see how chunky I'm actually looking because I've got you know suit, waistcoat, and everything uh, hiding it all. Um, I mean, that's the thing. That's that's what a waistcoat is really. It's just like a corset for men, you know, a girdle if you will. Um, but either way, the the idea is that yeah, when that comes off, then suddenly um, people will will see this this entirely new me. Um, and that would be that would be, be a nice little thing, because I have I have been packing on the pounds since I started my new job, um, and I'm not a fan of it. Um, if only because I've been wearing a shirt, and therefore it's very obvious when you pack on the pounds in a shirt, especially if you're tucking it in, which I do, because I like to be a little bit smart at work. Um, and now, obviously, I'm extremely smart at work. Um, yeah. Now, obviously, the I say obviously, the, the the ironing that I'm doing now is actually completely pointless ironing. Um, because, oh, hello, we'll increase that. Um, yeah, it's completely pointless ironing, not just because I'm ironing handkerchiefs, I mean, you know, that's never going to be entirely pointful, but it just seems wrong, you know, if you ever do end up handing your handkerchief to somebody and it's all wrinkled, it's going to look silly, isn't it? So you've got to be ready for that. It's like wearing nice pants, despite the fact that you never, ever, ever, ever get somebody to see them. Um, but no, it's more the shirts that I'm about to iron are shirts that I'm not going to wear for over 40 days because they don't have cuff links and I do insist on having links on my cuffs um, during Lent. Hang on a second, have I got this on? Gosh, I hope this is focusing properly. Uh, just a moment. Okay, so I was set to manual focus so anything could have been happening. I have no idea what you were just seeing for the start of that. Um, right, so let's, let's have a little explanation of what Lent is. So for my purposes, Lent is a four to six per uh, day period from Ash Wednesday to Easter Sunday in which I give something up. Um, I do my best to phrase it as an abstinence. Uh, last year I gave up um, not following sports, um, which is always a double negative. Or I don't know, I, I gave up aw avoiding televised sports, there we go. Which, yeah, does feel like a double negative, it's probably a little bit cheating, but there we go, that's what people wanted, and so that's what I did. Obviously nobody actually watched me doing that because it was boring as all hell, because it was sports. Um, I got very little out of it, you know, though I, I wasn't left a sports fan by the end of it, um, as you might imagine, uh, though I did get a healthy appreciation for Australian rules football because it's insane. Um, there is a playlist on my channel um, if you do want to watch every single hour of that, and there are many hours of that. Um, in fact, there should be about at least 46 hours of that because I was doing an hour for every day. Um, but either way, um, I have done various other lengths where I gave up things like footwear, cutlery, all that kind of thing. Um, I, I did, when I was a teenager, I started off trying like the food-based ones where I'd give up something that I'd like. Um, so sort of, I've done snacks in general before, that kind of thing. Um, but they always ended up being pretty easy. Um, so I kind of started branching out and trying to see, well, what else could I be doing? Um, the classic one is, I think, as I said before, uh, footwear. Um, because that one was back when I was at uni in Wales and it snowed the first day of Lent and you know um, it was generally very tricky but you know the, all the way through this what I always learn is that actually things are never quite as bad as you would expect them to be you can always get through it um, and always the difficult bit is the standard battery so the standard battery is what I give up every single uh, year um, they are meant to be just sort of innocuous little things that should be really easy, but they're always the hard bits. Um, and the standard battery is generally sort of no popping spots, no... Um, I always call it self-mutilation, um, even though that's a very harsh word for it. Um, but it's things like, you know, not, not peeling away the little, little the sides of my, of my nails and things like that, not biting, uh, biting away at my lips. Um, and these are kind of things that you do just instinctively a lot of the time. Um, now, a lot of years I have ended up getting around that by just sort of like rubbing those things, uh, those areas a lot, um, until it ends up effectively popping the spot, removing 
that little loose bit of skin or whatever it is. Um, so what I've done this year is I've said that actually the rule is that my hands are not allowed to touch anything but themselves um, outside of my morning ablutions because you know trying to actually get showered in the morning without touching yourself is very very difficult. Um, speaking of touching yourself, um, I do also have a part of standard battery is against gratification, if you will. Um, and yeah, that one that one depends on the year if it gets tricky. Actually, just sometimes just don't notice it at all. Some years it is very very onerous. Um, so far, it's not been too bad. Um, but yes, I've been sort of, I think I've been just been busy this year. So, you know, it's, it's when you've got nothing to do that suddenly you start thinking of other things to be doing, including popping spots and things like that. That's always the work of idle hands. Um, oh, I forgot to do the sleeves, I'm an idiot. Um, now, if anybody's watching this hoping for an ironing tutorial, uh, for one, I'm not actually showing you how I'm ironing, so that's a terrible tutorial. And two, I'm terrible at ironing. Um, it takes me far, far, far too long to iron a shirt. Um, especially considering that, as I say, this, this, this shirt is one that I'm not going to wear for another good 40 days or whatever. So, that is really pointless of me. Um, but, I do, I will say, I normally have a routine to ironing a shirt. Start with the sleeves, go for the sides, um, from the side, round the round the top of the back, down the side again, um, and then do the back, because the back's the easy bit in theory. Um, and the collar will get done at some point. I still can't work out when you do the collar, but there we go. Now, actually, with the, with the shirts that I am wearing during Lent, that brings up a whole new debate of, of how to iron something with uh, double cuffs because as we discovered there's this one not so bad but the shirt I was wearing yesterday just had a really really just fat fold um, where it doubled over and it just doesn't look good you want it, you want that to be a really tight fold you know um, just generally it's the, it's the whole thing with a suit is that you want everything to be very crisp um, and just look very good and straight and and flat if you will whilst at the same time flattering all your curves and so on and so forth uh, yeah it's tricky um, so yes this year however apart from the the, the standard battery um, I have the main event and the main event as I said is is casual clothing so the rules for the casual clothing is just that, I will never be wearing casual clothing. Um, now, this always brings up, well, first of all, the, oh, oh does that include on the weekends? Of course it includes on the weekends. Um, I don't do what a lot of people do and skip Sundays, because that just seems silly to me. Um, would make life far, far too easy. Um, and the other thing is also, well, how do you sleep? Um, and my answer is always not wearing casual clothes. Now, a lot of people would think that, well, pajamas aren't casual clothes. They're the, they're the appropriate thing. And I did almost go that route. I did almost agree with that sentiment. Um, but the problem there was that what people really wanted to see out of this was um, me doing exercise and doing other activities all in a suit. Um, and that means that if I'm being consistent, then either the exercises get done is in sportswear, because that's the correct thing to do the exercise in, or you know if I'm climbing, it's in climbing gear and whatever it is. Um, but more importantly is if we do it the other way and say that well, I do need to be wearing a suit for that, then when I'm sleeping, I also need to be wearing a suit. Um, you know, I can't, I can't do one or the other. You know, if we say that it's got, it's got to be appropriate clothing, then it's appropriate clothing for everything. Um, and that, that kind of makes life a bit too easy, if you will. Um, so, until I find a How I Met Your Mother style pyjama suit, 
uh, I am going to have to be stuck with wearing nothing in bed. Now, you'd think that's fine and that's all dandy and that kind of thing, but actually it causes a massive problem because I do not have an ensuite bathroom, which means that getting from my um, from my bedroom to the bathroom is always a gauntlet that somebody is going to find me completely starkers um, unless I wear a suit out to the bathroom um, which I'm somewhat unlikely to do um, and yeah. now the the other side to it as well is that just to make things um, less complicated somehow um, I divide up the body into, I think, five sections. So that is head, hands, torso, including arms, um, legs, sorry, and feet. And the rule is that if any one of those, so if, 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 if you go if you are at risk of going casual on any of those, then you have to make the choice. You know, it's either suit or nothing on that section. Uh, oh, bugger. Once again, no touching my face. It's all right. Sometimes things go wrong. But what are you going to do? Uh, conveniently, I have a stack of handkerchiefs. So uh, Now... Yeah, so that means, for instance, that at the moment I have no gloves on. The gloves I wear will be leather gloves or something else that's appropriate to wear in a suit. Um, at the moment, because I'm indoors, I'm not wearing shoes, and that means I am barefoot um, because slippers, socks, anything like that would also be inappropriate. Now, a lot of people are going to consider that cheating because I'm barefoot at the best of times because it turns out that after I did my barefoot lent, I actually quite liked it. Um, but, yeah, what, what are you going to do? Now... This actually causes, is a massive problem, is going to the toilet. Um, now, initially, I tried, and this is obviously when, when I'm going for a number two. Um, initially, I tried just sort of holding, because you've got double vents on there, so you've got this flap here. So even if you lift up the sides, the flap is still going to be dangling down, um, and it's in exactly the wrong place for safely doing a number two. So initially I just tried sort of bunching and holding it all up. Uh, I did at one point try just, you know, taking off everything. So, you know, jacket comes off, um, waistcoat comes off, shirt comes off, um, everything. T-shirt underneath comes off. Um, but that, oh, and tie comes off. But that took a ridiculous amount of time. And I already spent far too long in the toilet anyway, um, because I've not yet finished every solitaire game. And and yeah, that, that was that was that was far far too demanding on my time. So um, I worked out the trick to it. So the trick to it is um, waistcoat has a thing here for tightening it. So what I do is I grab the vent and tuck it into that thing, and suddenly. It's now out of the way, because the waistcoat is high enough to not be dangerous. Um, and as long as I remember to untuck it when I get back out, then I, everyone's none the wiser. Um, now, I may end up with a slightly wrinkly jacket. Um, I'm still working out the way around that, because I have it on good authority, and by good authority, I mean random websites, that it's not a good, a good, good idea to constantly be getting your suit pressed or uh, dry cleaned or anything like that. Um, only do it when absolutely necessary or you will make it shiny and wear it out and so on and so forth. Apparently dry cleaners are not good at these things. Um, but yeah, then that leaves me with these wrinkly things because I don't take the jacket off. I consider taking the jacket off to, to be, you know, gone casual. As soon as you're wearing just a waistcoat, you've gone casual. As soon as you undo the top button, you've gone casual. Um, now obviously, you know, in, in real terms, that's not true. You know, you still look smart if you're wearing a, a waistcoat. However, for the purposes of this lens, that is casual. That is not allowed. Where the hell have I got? Let's see, I need a hair. And back. Um, 
Yeah, so so that, that would, would amount to going casual, and we don't want to be accused of going casual. Um, so I'll not do that. Uh, so yeah, that is that is what I'm doing for Lens. Um, I will say this is, you know, just wearing a suit is not difficult. Um, you know, it, it, it takes a little while. People, you know, will insist on talking about it and, and you know, you've got to make the small talk about it. It does get a little bit boring, but, you know, this is, this is what happens when you make a spectacle of yourself. But... But, um, yeah, no, I think people, people are getting used to that side of it. So now the only worry is how ridiculously warm it is. So people that know me will know full well that I never, ever wear a jacket or a coat. I normally refer to my shirt as a jacket because, you know, I'm wearing a T-shirt underneath it, therefore it's a second layer, therefore it's a jacket. Um, and I'm happy with that. I'm happy being cold. You know, it's not that I don't feel the cold, I would just prefer to be cold than to be hot and muggy. Um, and yeah, no, walking around in the full three-piece suit, um, especially the walk into work, because I have a... I drive into work and then park up and then walk about 40 minutes in, assuming I've gotten out early enough. And that, that, that commute is just sort of murder. At the start of it, it's fine, because it's freezing at the start of it. Um, and I think, oh, actually, maybe wearing a jacket is a good idea. Maybe, maybe I, should, I should do this more often. And then five minutes later, God, no. That was, it was a terrible plan. Um, you know, definitely didn't think things through at all. And suddenly, I'm just, you know, um, I would describe it as uh, wearing a fever. It's just, it's just not pleasant at all. But, you know, that's, that's what I've, I've let myself in for. So I have only myself to blame, and I really do have only myself to blame. I'm not a religious person uh, by any means, um, you know, and, and that's, that's not at all why I'm doing it. Um, and indeed, very few religious people would, would ever do uh, Lent the, the way that I do Lent. Um, there are a lot of people that, that do do Lent are always impressed by it and think, oh, that's a good idea. Um, and really, yes, yes, it is a good idea. It should be something that is very difficult for you to give up, that you're giving up. It shouldn't be just crisps or chocolate or anything like that. Um, you know, as I say, I'm not a religious person, but I, I, do, I, I do like it when religious people actually understand what their convictions are and are willing to work by them and things like that, or to realise that they're ridiculous and, and abandon them. But whichever way they want to go is fine by me. Um, but yeah, just sort of keeping it sort of half there, you know, just being like, oh, I'm Catholic, but I use condoms. Like, no, no, that's not, that's not, that's not really being all that Catholic, is it? No. Um, I'm not saying don't use condoms. I'm saying condoms are, are, are a wonderful thing, great way to stop STIs, so on and so forth. But you know, if you are to believe that if you use condoms, you go to hell, then why don't you just practice some abstinence instead? Because it turns out that having sex outside of marriage will also cause you to go to hell, or maybe you're just not actually Catholic. How about that? As well as for you know all the other various denominations and religions that have similar sort of beliefs and similarly people sort of taking the good bits out of it which is kind of silly because you know they're not the good bits at all which people tend to actually hold on to there are many many good bits in Christianity and in most religions and for some reason people do rather like skipping over the properly good bits and going to the bits that they like for no good reason um, but yes, let's not dwell on that, because I dare say I'm not the person to be talking about that. I suppose anyone is, but yeah. Um, right, so yes, this is this has all gone a little bit weird. Um, I'm guessing next week I'll probably be still ironing, but different shirts. I'll get to show you my collar stays. Uh, and yeah, I, I might even have some more shirts that I have today and I, they might be all like fitted on online shirts and things like that and they might actually fit but we'll not know until that happens um, hell, I might even not be ironing I might be doing something entirely different but we'll not know until it happens so um, if you have watched um, I can't imagine why you watched but thank you for watching anyway um, and yeah I'm gonna leave it at that
soon as I finish this sleeve. Oh, um, and yeah, if there is anything in particular that you want to see me doing in a suit, in this suit or my other suit, I have two suits. It's been a very expensive lent, by the way. Um, giving out casual clothing is not a cheap endeavour, um, unless you know you're really rich, in which case, yeah, fine, go for it. Um, yeah, so yeah, if you've got anything that you want me to do, or you think I should do that would be easy for me to do, uh, keep in mind that I have now have no money, um, then yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be willing to entertain those suggestions.